Hello neighbor, I'm Robert Burns, and I guess I should more particularly say hello retired state troopers because those are the ones to whom this message is primarily directed at. Uh, however, it is also being provided out to uh, many others who have expressed interest in Louisiana State Police uh, affairs. Uh, and I'm coming to you today because many of you will recall that uh, a little over a year ago, actually closer to a year and a half ago, uh, there was a major scandal which broke out within the Louisiana State Police, or LSP for short, uh, and that entailed something called the Edmondson Amendment. Uh, I won't go over all of it, uh, but I will say this, you know, it was an attempt to uh, ramrod through a $55,000 uh, pension boost to Colonel Edmondson uh, that was attached to a bill uh, that had, uh, you know, and let's just say it, well, they tried to ram it through, okay, that, we'll put it as simple as that. Uh, it got detected by several bloggers, Tom Aswell, CB for Godston, uh, and it ultimately made it into the main, what we call the mainstream media, though it originated in, in the blog. Uh, CB for Gostin was all over it, uh, as was Tom Aswell. And, uh, you know, I felt like it would be a good idea to, to keep a chronological depository, a central depository, in the way of a website to track what all went on on this. Because, uh, you know, a number of heavyweight political figures got involved in this. Uh, and it was tracked chron chronologically from beginning to end, uh, as most people, or maybe you won't know if you didn't follow it, uh, it ended in a lawsuit filed by State Senator Dan Clater uh, to have the uh, law, which was passed, granting only him and one other uh, particular individual a substantial pay raise, to have it declared unconstitutional. Uh, and that website URL is lspripoff.com. That's lspripoff.com. And back in September or October, whichever the case, I believe it was September, if I remember right, when Judge Janice Clark wasted no time in declaring the, the Edmondson Amendment unconstitutional on its face, uh, I think many of us may have thought, well, gee, maybe it's over. Now, I had an awful lot of you in, the, in retired state troopers. I'm just going to tell you, uh, you were right. You were right. You told me, oh, no, it's a long ways from over. Trust me. I mean, you know, you called me, you emailed me, uh, said, let's stay on top of this because by hook or crook, some kind of way, you're going to start seeing more efforts and, you know, and, and uh, so I kept the website up. Now, there. We had to, I had to make an addition to that website to, today. The website is listed as a series of plays uh, from Act, I'm sorry, a series of acts in a play from Act 1 to Act 17. Uh, it'll have all the various things that transpired, the, the many posts CB for Godston made, uh, videos, which that's my expertise. I, am, I mainly let that be a repository, but I also provided critical videos. Uh, both of retirement board meetings, uh, which um, was were, were, was not uh, liked by, I believe the gentleman's name was Jason Starnes or something. I, I get them all. It's been a while, but I believe he was the one who objected very vehemently, wanting to know who the hell I was and why I was suddenly interested in LSP affairs. But at any rate, uh, I've had to add another another act to that play. It's it's Act 18, uh, and I'll be giving you a direct link to it. But let me just say this. Uh, we've also had to add another player uh, into this whole act because uh, whereas before uh, this whole thing could be pinned on Bobby Jindal and cronyism and corruption, things of that nature, and, and all of the bloggers, all of the state troopers, we, everybody, myself included, uh, all let Bobby Jindal have it, okay, over this thing, and I think every one of us was justified. Uh, but now we have a brand new player enter the, entering the scene, and that would be gubernatorial candidate John Bell Edwards. All right. Uh, and I'm just going to state that the Hayride uh, broke a major feature story in which they are uh, giving sort of a behind the scenes uh, look at uh, just what all went into the Sheriff's Association endorsement of John Bell Edwards for governor. Uh, now, it's the Sheriff's Association in, in 2007 when Jindal first took office who was so adamant that Mike Edmondson uh, be appointed to the Louisiana State Police Colonel position. 
and uh, they have basically wanted him there and, can, and very much want him there during the next tenure of the next governor. Uh, and uh, that Hay Riot article, uh, which I'm going to give you the link for, uh, no need for me to go into all of it because the, the author did an excellent job. His sources are excellent. Uh, one gentleman, Jerry Patrick, who does not mind his name being put out there, uh, I can tell you that he was an invaluable source for me. Uh, I know there are several other uh, troopers out there that have said, well, I also contacted you and you do not have to worry. I, I'm not going to make your name public like I just made Jerry Patrick's, uh, but without your added guidance and, and uh, some more information, in, interesting information on Colonel Edmondson, uh, you know, which I'll provide links. I'll tell you what, I'll go ahead and provide links to that. Uh, just so we can see exactly what type of, uh, of uh, LSP colonel we're dealing with. They're disciplinary infractions. Uh, a lot of people may not be aware of this, but th I, I, I would not be able to provide you with that were it not for uh, those dedicated troopers. But the bottom line is, you know, it's now been said that, oh, okay, John Bell Edwards, who was so critical of Bobby Jindal. Look, John Bell Edwards, every other word he says is Bobby Jindal this, Bobby Jindal that, Bobby Jindal this, seven years of Bobby Jindal, Bobby Jindal. You know, and look, it's tough to argue with that. We're, we're in a mess, okay? And I, would, I was in there criticizing too. But now it's being said that John Bell Edwards has agreed to reappoint Mike Edmondson and as a result and I, I don't want to steal that Hayride article because they did a great job on it but uh, you know that was at the behest of the Sheriff's Association that he can detect he can you know wave that you know flaunt that Sheriff's Association endorsement uh, and it came about as a result of them having said you're gonna keep Mike Edmondson in there never mind all these things that John Bell Edwards was so critical of Never mind, as John Kennedy explained it, you know, bellying up to the trough with all four feet in your snout and trying to rip us off. And that's why I named it LSP Ripoff. There's no other way to say it. It is a ripoff. And it has tarnished the Louisiana State Police. And John Bell Edwards, who was so critical of all of this, now that he can make hay with it, if you will, uh, has said, yeah, I can do that. We can, we can retain Mike Edmondson as, as LSP colonel. Uh, and as a result, he got the Sheriff's Association endorsement. But he goes a step further in an unprecedented move and quite likely an illegal move. Uh, the Louisiana State Troopers Association, without a vote of its membership, has all of a sudden, with a, what has been said is, and that's why I'm going to refer you to the, the Hayride article, it has been referred to as a cram down, okay? Uh, Edmondson and, and some other key folks just said, look, this is what we're doing. They didn't consult the membership. Nobody was allowed to weigh in on it. And this is typical of the type of corrupt government that has been run, with, particularly with regard to state police, over the last few years. And it appears that St. John Bell Edwards is more than happy when it benefits him to let it go right on. Never mind that I've got you on video. Go to Act 3 of that play. Go to Act 3 and watch the video of John Bell Edwards, you know, and how he's, ve oh, this is not good, not good. And they said it, they, 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 they duped him, snuck it in by him, okay? Now, yeah, looks like he's more than happy to go along with it, uh, you know, uh, when it's going to benefit him politically. And this, this is just another means of demonstrating that there's very little difference between the current version of the Edwards for governor and the one we faced I don't know, whatever it was, 20 years ago, I guess, was the last time he was governor. It's hard to believe it's been that long, but it has been 20 years. Uh, and, of course, we got more evidence of that now. They want to put distance between, well, they want to, John Bell Edwards has said, oh, Cleo Fields is not involved in my campaign. Well, that's funny. You know, I put a post out previously. Here's the robocall, you know, and urging me to go out and vote for Cleo Fields. I'm, if that's not involvement, I don't know what is. Okay, but I can understand you not wanting to be associating with that. The man was, was, was caught on FBI wiretaps trying to stuff 20, well, he couldn't fit all the cash, the $20,000 in cash in his pocket, so he asked Governor Edwards uh, if he had a paper bag. And, of course, even on those FBI wiretaps, what do they reveal? Here's, here's the dialogue that happened in those FBI wiretaps. Basically, uh, Cleo Field says, hey, I visited with John Bro last week, Edwards. Oh, you did? What y'all talk about? 
and I'm, I'm gonna tone it down because the language on there is inappropriate for, for any younger viewer. Uh, well, I'll just use the, the initials. Said I told, told him I was gonna run against him, Edwin Edwards. You did what? Fields, yeah, MF about blanked in his pants. All right, Edwards, I bet he did. The Republicans field any kind of a decent candidate and you get in the race, John Broad will make the runoff. So, Edwin Edwards is paying Cleo Fields $20,000 in cash for which Fields never would reveal the purpose of. And we've got him on a wiretap saying that, oh, I've just told John Bro I'm liable to run again. How do we know Edwin Edwards wasn't paying $20,000 cash money to Cleo Fields in exchange for Cleo Fields not running against Edwin Edwards? Because Cleo Fields is smart enough to know he can't win a statewide race. It's impossible. But he's also smart enough to know you don't do what I tell you to do. I'll get in the race. I won't win, but I'll sure siphon off all your support and you'll be out on the street. And that's why John Bell Edwards will always be beholden to Cleo Fields if he goes into the governor's mansion. Now, I'm going to give you that link for the Hayride article because it gives you what is said to have taken place behind the scenes, the corruption that's involved in this, these so-called endorsements that John, well, they are endorsements, I shouldn't say so-called, that John Bell wants to tout. Uh, but before I do that, I want to just give a brief wrap-up of this video. I mentioned uh, myself and several bloggers, namely CB Forgotten and Tom Aswell. Uh, I first met Tom about a year and a half ago, or, or thereabouts, almost two years ago. Uh, and, uh, you know, when we sat down, we realized that both of us were not on the same end of the spectrum politically. Uh, I am fairly, as would be obvious, I suppose, a fairly uh, conservative, uh, long-time Republican, uh, although I did briefly go away to the Libertarian Party, but I am now back as a registered Republican. Uh, I'll be honest, I, I, got, I got away from the Republican Party when I was infuriated uh, over its embracing of Buddy Caldwell. Because Buddy Caldwell, I mean, if, if you're going to just bring what are, are actual Democrats because they're willing to change a box on a card, then, you know, what, what does it mean? Okay, but thank God the Republican Party has come to its senses, and now we're in a good, great position to get that gentleman out of office. Because I'm going to tell you, I have never met any more anyone any more corrupt in my life than Buddy Caldwell. But uh, having said that, uh, I felt like I could work with Tom, who is obviously unbelievably liberal. I didn't know how liberal at the time I agreed to to uh, work with him in terms of going in and, and investigating state agencies. Uh, you know, he believes in holding them accountable, and so do I. Uh, that's why it's going to be real interesting, because Tom led the, for the forefront of shoving all this Edmondson stuff out there and throwing it in Bobby Jindal's face, and Tom is deep in the tank for John Bell Edwards, okay? So when Edwards names uh, Edmondson as his LSP colonel, I'm gonna be very curious to know exactly how Tom Aswell is gonna spin all that, uh, you know, or, or his readers as well. Are they just gonna say, is it gonna be a case of, that's okay, wait, what? That's all right. That's okay. We're gonna love him anyway, you know, because I can't think of anything else you can say. You know, you're going to have supreme egg on your face if that turns out to be what develops, and every indication it is, is that if, Ed, if uh, John Bell Edwards wins, Mike Edmondson will be your next, uh, 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 well, not your next, he'll just stay in the same position. Uh, and I'll challenge John Bell Edwards this, and I'll tell you what, I'll come film it, all right? If you want to shoot all this down, let's put you on camera and you make the emphatic statement that you are not going to appoint Mike Edmondson as LSP Colonel, and while you're at it, let's have you state emphatically into the camera that you are not going to appoint Jay Darden as the Commissioner of Administration. If you want to take me up on that challenge, Mr. Edwards, let me know. I will drive to wherever you want and set up this camera, and we'll get you on video making those statements. The very fact that, I'll tell you right now, I know you're not going to make them because I know you've promised the jobs, okay? And so if you went on video and said, I will not appoint these gentlemen, there's going to be one hell of a backlash on your part, and you know it, and you don't have, you can't do it, all right? So, but now I want to just say one last thing. Uh, I know there's common readership uh, from the days that I did serve as a guest columnist for, for Tom Aswell. Uh, those days are over. I have not been to his website now in about three months. I have no intention of ever going back. I'm just being blunt about it. 
Uh, and I, you know, for those of you who may have wondered, did we did we part ways amicably? amicably be, uh, was it an amicable? There we go. Uh, parting of ways. The answer is no. It most certainly was not. And uh, I'm going to briefly just tell you what what was the the proverbial last straw for me. Uh, Mr. Aswell puts on his. Uh, blog that well we're neither Democrat nor Republican and 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 all viewpoints what the hell they are all viewpoints are welcome uh, and what I'm gonna I'm gonna give and I'm gonna give you the link for for this little episode because I'm I'm still it it it, it teased me off to even think about it but at any rate uh, back in June of this year Tom was taking a break uh, to 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 write this book for Bobby Jindal uh, on Bobby Jindal. Uh, you know, and of course he was hoping that Bobby Jindal would hold in in the presidential race until February. We now know that's not going to be the case and there's probably going to be virtually no interest in, in Tom's book. Uh, I know I have no interest in it. I, I'm not going to read it if you gave it to me. Uh, but at any rate, as a result, he had an extended period where he was calling upon guest writers to write articles. Uh, one such guest writer uh, submitted an article, I believe it's on June the 9th of 2015. I'm going to have the PDF file for you to pull up. Uh, this alleged guest writer goes by the name of Earth Mother, uh, which I, I'm going to just be honest with you. I have a real pride. You want to make comments anonymously, that's one thing. But when you're talking about writing full-blown articles, if you can't put your name to it, I don't think the article has any business in there, okay? Because who, how in the hell are we going to know who Earth Mother is, whether Earth Mother's even male or female, or whether there even is an Earth Mother, okay? And if you don't have guts enough to put your name behind an article, it really shouldn't be in there. But it's his blog. He can do what he wants. Uh, and so, Earth Mother went on a real tear here about all that's been wrong in the Jindal administration and, and, and this, that, and the other. And, you know, actually, I thought she did a pretty darn good job. Assuming it is a she or that the person even exists. Uh, uh, but at any rate, I only took exception with one particular passage, and I'm going to read it. It's highlighted. Uh, and that says that, that uh, we're going to have to reinstate taxes on business and individuals. She discloses parenthetically, I'm probably in the number that would be affected, so I have skin in the, the game. We have to accept the fact that we must pay for the services we need and want. Take a look at the tax basis of good quality of life states like Minnesota. They leveled additional small income taxes, and the result, the state is rolling in revenue and business is booming. All right. I didn't like that particular commentary in her post. And I was very diplomatic about it, incredibly diplomatic. And we're going to read now. This is, this, what you, this is my response. However, I want to emphasize something to you. This is what Tom allowed to go forward of my response. He butchered my comment to high heaven, all right? So I'm going to read what what wound up as the final comment, uh, and then I'm going to tell you what he butchered out uh, and why he butchered it out and why he and I are no longer associated with one, with one another. Uh, I said, Earth Mother, uh, you know how to pose your arguments in a very authoritative and tough to refute manner. While I concur with a significant portion of your arguments, I do believe that, as John Kennedy expresses, we don't have, quote, we don't have a revenue problem in Louisiana, we have a spending problem, unquote. Hence, I'm not in favor of increased revenue as the first means of solving our fiscal problems. What I am in favor of is Kennedy's efforts to get to the bottom of, number one, the magnitude of all these consulting contracts, number two, their nature and purpose, and number three, whether they can be justified and why they may have been initiated in the first place. John Kennedy said a lot more than that, okay? And I provided a direct link to John Kennedy's presentation to the press club, and in my comment, which got butchered to high heaven, I mean butchered to... to I, 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 as you can tell, I still hadn't cooled down from it because it's just flat wrong, okay? Uh, and I said in my comment that I know when I'm in a room with someone smarter than me. And I will tell you right now, John Kennedy is smarter than me. That doesn't mean I'm an idiot. Most people will tell you I'm pretty you know, reasonably intelligent. But I know when I'm out of my league, okay? Uh, and, and I'm out of my league with John Kennedy. Uh, and so I said, look, rather than me arguing why we don't need tax increases, I'm just going to give a link 
for this presentation by John Kennedy, not only of the waste within DHH, 900,000 emergency room visits, etc. Uh, you know, I mean, he just cited, I'm not talking about vague generalities, I'm talking about highly, highly specific numbers. So it's like I said, I don't want to get in a debate with John Kennedy. Uh, not that, I mean, he and I agree philosophically anyway, so there wouldn't be much to debate. But at any rate, Tom said he felt like that was going off on a tangent, and he ripped it. And I'm going to tell you something, I don't like that one bit, because it is a lot of work to go and do these videos at public forums, and, you know, here I was saying, look, I, I don't, don't take my word for it, take an expert, and I want to say something. Within this group, they used to praise John Kennedy. I mean, John John Kennedy is Mr. Everything. John Kennedy this, John Kennedy that. John Kennedy is the one statewide elected official that we know we can count on and be uh, to, to give us a straight shot and be on the up and up. Hey, John Kennedy. And boy, when John Kennedy came out and said, I endorsed David Vitter, I endorsed David Vitter for governor, which I too made my sentiments known that I too supported David Vitter. Uh, I don't know which of us became the, the more hated person over there. And that's fine, okay? You know, but I'm going to tell you something. When you butcher my comment, and then it starts to look like, well, Robert Burns must not be able to, to pose legitimate arguments. You know, I mean, look at this weak, watered-down comment. Well, you don't know it's watered-down. I do, because I know how badly he butchered it, all right? Uh, but that's wrong, okay? And, it, and for him to say I went off on a tangent, and yet, you have to forgive me, I, I've got quite a few paperwork, it's all scanned and you're going to see it. Look at this! You know, this is what he's limiting me to, but he says I went off on a tangent and look at the person below him. You know, look at, look at you know, and he starts talking about, question to you, uh, reform of these contracts, what, what level of state spending? Was it 15 billion, 25 billion? Look, every bit of that, every bit of that was in that video from John Kennedy. Wouldn't be having to ask questions like this if Tom hadn't taken it out. Then we have one state worker, once again an anonymous person. I always put my name on post. And look, I, there again, if you want to make comments, now oh, Tom says, well, we got to have anonymity, there'll, there'll be repercussions, and you know, there's always this conspiracy that somebody's going to be the fired the next day for making a post on Tom, well, Tom Aswell's blog. Uh, but at any rate, we got one state worker who says, Robert, I have appreciated your post and most of your comments, but you're, while you are, you're dead, you're a dead wrong about the state not having a revenue problem. We need more revenue to actually balance the budget for a change and to restore some of the damage done to Louisiana by Jindal and his legislative accomplishes. So I want to conclude this video. I know it's been a little bit lengthy uh, and obviously uh, the thrust of it is to go to uh, the Louisiana, uh, the, the, the Hayrides uh, article. That's what the whole thrust of this thing is. But look, I want to emphasize one thing. The, 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 the folk that I just read from and that, that, that blog, Louisiana Voice, which as I said, I'm not going to anymore, but you're welcome to go to it if you'd like. We are talking about people who are in the tank for John Bell Edwards, okay? John Bell Edwards is a god, all right? And you hear what they're saying. We got to have tax increases. Tax increases are a must. I know John Bell Edwards has said he won't go to tax increases. All I'm telling you is his disciples, his in the tank people are out there hooping and hollering saying we're going to have tax increases. Okay? So you make up your mind because I'm telling you the folk that are the most adamant supporters of John Bell Edwards are saying get ready for tax increases and I'm going to tell you right now that's not going to sit well with me with the kind of waste that John Kennedy has described in there. Every dime of that better start being wiped out and I mean we're talking about a staggering number of 900,000 emergency room visits in one year and the staggering cost that's being paid needlessly and that's just one example he cited. So, yeah, I'm a little bit teed off at Mr. Aswell, needless to say. And do you know he had the nerve to call me after this episode and ask me if I would write the chapter in his book on Jindal entailing Bruce Greenstein because he knows I have followed that matter to a T. And, you know, despite everything that happened, and he said, I need it in five days. It needs to be 5,000 words. Do you know I did it? 
And he even sends me back an email, oh, God, this is great. Thank you so much. At least he's complimentary of my writing skills when he allows my writing skills to be uh, put out there. Uh, and he said, this is fantastic. Thank you so much. And don't you know, <laughs> when we ha I, I put a subsequent comment before I cut everything off with him, uh, and, and, and it was quite conciliatory, quite gracious, but I made reference to Miss Betty's story and the fact that uh, she was uh, had been victimized by an auctioneer. And long story short, helped her file a pro se lawsuit. She recovered a little over $5,000 in that lawsuit. And once again, he said that was going off on a tangent. Well, let me tell you something, Tom. My Betty story is the equivalent of your Mike Edmondson, okay? And I can tell you right now, I never would have told you you went off on a tangent with Mike Edmondson, okay? But that's what you said about me and Betty's story. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. It went on longer than I did. I didn't prepare any notes for it. I've shot straight from you uh, because obviously the election is only a couple of days away and I wanted to get this out. Uh, but this is what you're talking about. You're talking about pure rank corruption on reappointing Mike Edmondson. Same thing on Jay Darden. He's, he, he's already been promised that commissioner of administration position. And please don't forget about these tax increases that, that the disciples of John Bell Edwards are telling us, we've got to have it. We are going to have it. Okay? No, sir. I want somebody who's going to look in there and get rid of this waste. And that's what I've heard from David Vitter. I make no apologies for my support of David Vitter. I am embarrassed by my association with Tom Aswell. I'm not going to lie, all right, because, you know, you, you can say it's going off on a tangent. The reason you took my link down for John Kennedy's counter arguments about the tax increases is because you know he's right. You know he's right, and you know it. And you know that man is incredibly intelligent, poses incredible arguments. Y'all used to praise him. But you don't want to hear from him now because he supported David Vitter. He's the same man the day after he supported David Vitter as he was the day before Dave, he supported David Vitter. And so too am I. Now that'll do it for this sound off feature. I hope you found it enlightening. I hope you get out and vote on November 21st. And I can tell you right now, I have been working my tail off to help ensure that the next governor of Louisiana, who I firmly believe will be the best governor Louisiana has ever had, and that would be Mr. David Bruce Vitter. Thank you so much. This is Wednesday. we got three days until the election. Don't forget to get out and vote. Thank you once again.